story here, Derek Daly, is the fact that if yesterday they were struggling, what are the Penske's doing today? They're still not in. And it's hard to believe that the struggle continues, and I wonder at the end of the day, will we replace the word struggle with maybe with the word embarrassment? Because it would be embarrassing for Roger Penske to miss this race. Think of it like this. Marlboro Team Penske is the benchmark that everybody measures themselves against on performance level and presentation. Well, the presentation as ever is immaculate, but the speed simply has not been there any day this month. They've gone through four cars. Started off with a 95 Penske, went back to the 94 Penske, a 94 Reynard, a 95 Lola seemed to be the ticket. However, the speed never came. Now, this morning, in conditions that we thought were maybe ideal, people like Davy Jones, who were also struggling yesterday, did lap speeds of 226 miles an hour. Penske's never made it over 223, so the struggle continues. Now, consider this. What happens at the end of the day? Let's say there's five minutes to go, and we have a Penske driver, Junior or Emerson, in the field. Maybe he's on the bubble. What happens if the other Penske driver's in line to potentially push him out of the race? I mean, we could have a catastrophe at the end of the day. As if we don't have enough nightmares <laughs> with those possibilities here. You saw Roger Penske just a moment ago down in the pits. Alan Sir Jr. is in the 21T car. That is the Renard. Our best indication is, is that that's not a car that they're particularly interested in. So, Derek, why is it out there? Well, here's the reason. We saw yesterday Alan Sir Jr. took two legitimate qualifying attempts in the Lola. One, he simply wasn't fast enough. The second one, the Mercedes engine blew up halfway through. He's only allowed one more in that car. If it's not fast enough, he has no other options except the Reynard. It's an officially entered car here. Therefore, that car has three more attempts. But the chances really of Al Jr. in that probably 50 minutes of cool weather that's probably faster this, uh, this evening, the chance of him having four attempts at qualifying for this race is very slim, Paul. You so know that. That car is the backup to the backup. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> On Emerson. Ooh. He's never in his racing career ever had to face a situation like this in the past. World champion, IndyCar champion, double Indy 500 champion. And never having driven a Lola. He's in one now, and it is his only hope. We'll use the same three laps out of the pits a flying lap gives him a feel he needs that flying lap because that's what gives him the feel and that's what gives him the confidence can he charge absolutely flat out into turn one when it counts this is the warm-up lap that gives him that indication he has a digital readout on his dashboard he knows as soon as he crosses the start finish line exactly what speed he is doing in the car. Look at the color scheme. So unfamiliar to see Miller genuine draft with Marlboro on the side and Emerson's helmet in it. One attempt charged against this car yesterday afternoon at 225.498 miles an hour, an average for three laps for Emerson Fittipaldi. So he has two more chances in this car. That is assuming that he can actually get back into the qualifying line and present again should he wave off from this one. Some very tense people down at Penske Racing as they pushed the car up to the line and brought it out for qualifying. Oh, that's a pretty good apex speed at turn one. 233. That's the type of numbers he needs. You can see he lost 11 miles an hour, which indicates bad handling. He's got to come out of the power. Oh, 229 and three. That's not bad. It's not bad. Still quick enough to qualify if he can maintain it. 221. Look at that, he lost eight miles an hour halfway through the short shoot. Nine miles an hour. That's still good. This is a good enough average to keep him in the field. The first lap now. 225, 451. 225, 451. That's going to be marginal for this field. He's got to definitely try and get that average up. Look at that, 234. He still drops off. His exit speed off turn two and turn four is what's beginning to kill the speed in this car. He needs to try and pick that up. He's doing all he can. Oh, he dropped down into turn three also. What's his exit speed? 220. It's going to be close. 
Looking for the completion of the second lap for Emerson Fittipaldi. The second attempt on the car. The speed falls off badly at 224, 871 miles an hour. Now he's averaging 225.160. Will he take that average? He will be the slowest car in the field. Oh, Emerson is beginning to flirt with danger here because the speed from what we see, it's not there yet. Up a mile an hour into three. That's not a good speed across the short shoot in one and two, or three and four. Oh, drops down. If he's slow off four, he's slow down this front straight. This doesn't look like a good lap. It's decision time for Penske Racing now. The third lap at 224.243 miles an hour, averaging 224.854. Now, will they take this run or wait for the third possible attempt on this car, the last possible attempt? Keeping an eye on the starter, keeping an eye down with the Penske team members at the far end of the pit area as Emerson Fittipaldi tries desperately to make it into the 500 field. Will they take it? Will they take the run? Will they take the run? And they do. The checkered flag flies for Emerson Fittipaldi. He completed the fourth lap at 225.068 miles an hour, averaging 224.907 miles an hour. Emerson Fittipaldi is in the 33rd and final qualifying position. The field at Indianapolis is full. The bumping is ready to begin. Emerson, I, I get the feeling as you got out of the car, you're not happy with this time. No, not happy because yes, I went faster. And, uh, you know, much faster than today. And I had a, a pop of valve going off today on the shame. Was there, was there just nothing more in the car, Emerson? No, no. nothing more. How disappointing in view of what you might have had yesterday when that was waved off. Well, very disappointing because I was solid in the field yesterday. We heard Tony Bettenhausen tell us earlier he had problems with the pop-off valve. What they told Stefan is, don't touch it. Don't go near it. Don't try and dial a little bit of more boost because it's so dangerous. If you lift that valve, for all intents and purposes, it's over. Speed into turn one, 230. That is only average at best. He needs more than that. 223 off turn two. One attempt charged against this car at 224, 495 miles an hour for three laps. If he can't do better than that, then he cannot move to the party off the bubble. Oh, it doesn't look good in three and four. 222, 221, only an average lap. Let's wait and see what the speed is. The first lap complete for Stefan Johansson, 224, six, six, nine miles an hour. Faster than yesterday's average but not fast enough to put Fittipaldi off the bubble. Not fast enough, and he's losing time. Between turns one and two, Stefan Johansson has gone slower this run. Oh, he's slower into turn three. Watch the short shoot, oh, he's slower. This is not a good lap. Not a good lap for Stefan Johansson. Two attempts charged against this car. For the moment, Fittipaldi is safe on the bubble. Looking for the second lap now. 223, 691. You were right, Derek. Falling off badly. Still not fast enough to make it into this field. Stefan is in trouble when he begins to turn in to two and four. Oh, he's down to 219. He is in deep trouble. He is in deep trouble. He cannot take this run because it just simply is not fast enough. He's got to go to the back of the line. No option. His car owner, Tony Bettenhausen, has picked up, though not yet waved, the yellow flag, indicating that they would wave him off this run and leave him with a single attempt. A car that is unknown for the team. They worked with their own cars. This is the Lola, borrowed from Ray Hall Hogan Racing. Al Enzer Jr. has tried to get it up to speed for qualifying twice. First time he waved off after two laps at 224 miles an hour. His second attempt ran at 223.480 miles an hour, both of those yesterday. This is the third and final attempt on this car for Little Al. Never have we seen this before. He could bump his teammate out of the race and have no guarantee that he's in it himself because there are more cars in line behind him trying to get in this race. 
The run begins for the defending champion of the 500, the defending pole sitter, Al Unser Jr. Never has an Indy 500 champion come back to the 500 trying to qualify and not made it into the field. 231 into turn one. But look at the amount he lost between the short shoe and then into turn two. Oh, this does not look good. Attempting to bump out his teammate, Emerson Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi's speed, 224.907. Loses a huge amount of time. In the short shoot, 217 off turn four. Not a good lap for Al Unser Jr. Here comes the first indication as he goes into one. 221.992 miles an hour. Not nearly good enough for the defending champion. He's obviously able to carry the speed down the front straight and into turn one. But then, look at the handling difficulties he has with the car. Perhaps he's got way too much push because he's out of the power and loses a huge amount of time and speed. And of course, that makes him slow all the way down that long, long back straight. Picks it up a little bit in the middle of the short shoot between three and four. Exit speed off four. Has to be higher. It can't be any slower than that. Still not a good lap. Imagine what he's feeling in the cockpit. He knows how fast, or rather how slow it is. But he did bring the lap up to 224.092. The average at 223.037. Not enough to take Fittipaldi out of the field. He has two laps to go. The third and final attempt on this car. Oh, he needs to dig deeper, and he is beginning to dig deeper. You have to get brave sometimes. He doesn't like being too brave between the concrete walls, but this is faster. This lap is considerably faster. The Indianapolis 500, the most important event in this man's life. It is all he has ever dreamed of. Nine times the Unser family has taken the checkered flag here at Indianapolis. The third lap complete. 225.113, it begins to climb. The average 223.725. The last lap will tell the tale, and it will have to be hot. And that first lap of 221 may tell the story because I don't see enough speed here through our speed traps to lift Al Unser into the 227s or 8 range, which is what it will take to bring that average above Emerson's. Al Jr. is in deep trouble. Heading for the checkered flag, keeping an eye now on the final lap average. He has to beat 224.9. 224907, he can't do it. He doesn't do it. Al Unser Jr. has not yet qualified. Fittipaldi is still in the field. Now, what will this man, Roger Penske, do? The team has never been in this situation. 24 minutes to go. Cars still in line. Many cars still in line. They have no other car available. The C plan is the Renard. It's not been as fast as the Lola. Al Unser Jr. in the Reynard has never been fast. He used it today, had never performed, and all they can do is shake their head because the hours and toil and turmoil of this month of May beginning to wear everybody down at the Marlboro Team Penske. Who to believe? So slowly now, Al Unser Jr. won victory this year at Long Beach, but he can't make it into the 500. At least he hasn't done so yet and he is running out of time. Cars that have not been nearly fast enough, there they are, being pushed back at the back of the tech line. Emerson Fittipaldi still on the bubble. Al Unser Jr. not in the show. Marco Greco waving off on the third attempt. Let's go to Jan Bikas. Well, Paul, there are two Penske entrants, but one car you're looking at there was a Penske, but up ahead is the Reynard. These are the other two cars that Al Unser Jr. has spent time in. Now, they're very far back in line. I don't think they have a shot at getting Al Unser Jr. in either of these cars. I think what they're doing is they're trying to protect other people from getting into line. In other words, trying to jam up the line with their cars, so hopefully Emerson Fittipaldi can stay in. Well, in theory, we probably only have time for for four, perhaps five more qualifiers before the final gun sounds for qualifying for the 79th Indy 500. Stefan Johansson has another car in line ready to go and on the drivers a chance. And they do. The car waved off for Davey Hamilton. Stefan Johansson, the car has had two attempts clocked against it. One yesterday at 224.4. Then today, not long ago, at 224.179, the bubble speed is Emerson Fittipaldi's at 224.907.
And we mentioned earlier, he has the speed in this car, but he doesn't have the speed when it counts. You have to produce it right now, Stefan, if you're going to make it into this race. But Jan Bikas, they have made some changes since that last run. Yes, they have, Paul. They've made big changes. I had a chance to talk with Stefan. He said he went absolutely flat out in that first run, and somehow the car was not free. Somehow it had too much downforce. Some reason it just wasn't running down the straightaway. They stripped an enormous amount of downforce off this car. Now it's for him to try and hold it down again to see if they can get the speed up. So the car's loosened up, more in Stefan's hands. And, of course, the trade-off is... Can you stay flat through the corners and 224.8 is right on the bubble of being able to knock Emerson off, but he's got to pick it up a little bit. Definitely going to have to pick up during the next three laps. Averaging 224.8, Emerson's in at 224.907. That's the bubble speed. Oh, this is better for Stefan. This is better. Tony Bettenhausen is absolutely chewing his nails at the moment. It's faster everywhere on the racetrack so far. For the Audi Max car, may have a starting spot and Roger Penske's customer may knock him out of the Indy 500 and it's with his competitors Reynard. Owner Tony Bettenhausen with that tremendous family legacy here he brings the speed up Stefan Johansson at 225 739 he's averaging 225.282 fast enough to take Emerson Fittipaldi out of the field. Oh, Stefan looks good. He's only halfway through. He needs to carry the speed, and he needs to be consistent. He is faster again. Whatever they did to the car, it has proved to be the right decision. Same speed of the short shoot. Speed, same speed off turn four, but this looks like a better lap overall. Can he maintain the average? It looks much better. We'll take a look at the third lap. 225.9. He's averaging 225.494, and that is fast enough. Just about two miles to go, and we will have no Penske driver in this race. Johansson about to knock off the double IndyCar champion, former world champion, and he has everything he needs. He just needs one more corner. Tony Bettenhausen and his driver, Stefan Johansson, they stuck with the Reynard. Worked on it as hard as they could, made drastic changes, as you heard Jan Vikas tell you. And here he takes the lap. And the fourth lap complete. And 225.547 takes Emerson Fittipaldi, the second and final Penske car, out of the field. Tony Bettenhausen has a car in the field. And look at the joy and the celebration for the Alumax team down there. Tony Bettenhausen, a driver himself, he's worked so hard at it. Dick Simon there, John Menard there. Everybody celebrating what is a very popular run here, but a tragedy for the Penske team. Let's go to Jan. Congratulations, Tony. Do you ever think you bumped Emerson? No, and I'm sorry to see it happen. I really am. I bet he is. I bet he's sorry to see it happen. He's delighted to see it happen because Stefan gets an opportunity. What a great day for Tony Bettenhausen, who is in so much trouble trying to get a Penske in the field first, then trying to get a Reynard in the field, and Johansson takes the applause from everybody down the pit lane here. Standing ovation on the 5 8 of a mile front stretch here in Indianapolis for Stefan Johansson. Hear the sound of his engine as he rolls down the crew out looking for him. They want to get that qualifying picture. Stefan Johansson has made it into the Indianapolis 500 mile race, and Emerson Fittipaldi is out. I think you should say that again. He's what? Out. Emerson Fittipaldi and Alan Sir Jr. will not be in the Indy 500 as it stands right now. There is no occurrence in modern sport, in sport, that parallels this, the defending champion, four total wins between those two drivers, Fittipaldi and Allender Jr., the defending pole sitter, and they are not in this 500 field, and there's about six minutes to go, and absolutely no possibility, despite the fact those cars are back in line. So now Stefan Johansson climbs out of the car. Congratulated by us. We talk so much about the mysteries, the intrigues of Indianapolis, the emotion. Man, the hair is standing up on the back of my neck, Paul. I can't tell you that right now. Stefan still hasn't taken off the helmet. One by one, the crew members, hugs, high fives, handshakes. Oh, my. Stefan is in the field, and what high drama here in these final moments. 
So Stefan Johansson makes it into the field. Let me reset the last two rows for you now. Marco Greco is trying to get in the car so that he can get out on a qualification run. And a quick word from Stefan Johansson. The emotion of this moment after battling and battling and now knocking Team Penske out of the Indy 500. Well, obviously that's uh, you know that's just the sad part of all this. I mean, it's uh, you know I don't think that's <coughs> how it should be. I mean, you know, I mean obviously the Pens could certainly belong in this race, but we've had such a rough time, all of us, you know, with us and the Pens could team. This month. I'm just real happy for particularly for all the guys in the team because it's been the toughest three weeks I've ever had. Well, you guys have deserved it. It's the work that pays off literally at the last minute. Congratulations. Thank you, Stefan Johansson and the crew celebrate. It's over for Marco Greco. Can't possibly get it done. Many stories to come out of this. Alanzer Jr. and Fittipaldi are out. The field is set. I'm Paul Page for Derek Daly. So long from Indianapolis.